Okay, guys, it's summer fun drive time at the Scott Horton Show. Bills are piling up and equipment is wearing out. So here's the deal. Anyone who donates $50 or more gets a chance to win a week's vacation for two to Costa Rica. Drawing is July 15th. Winner, go whenever you want. See more details at scotthorton.org slash raffle. Anyone who donates $100 or more gets entered into the raffle, plus a one-ounce silver QR code commodity disc from commoditydiscs.com. And the first 25 people to donate $100 or more will also get a copy of Your Money or Your Life, Why We Must Abolish the Income Tax by Sheldon Richman, or the audiobook of Lou Rockwell's Fascism vs. Capitalism, narrated by me for free. Stop by scotthorton.org slash donate or scotthorton.org slash raffle for details. You can also sign up for monthly donations by way of PayPal, per interview at Patreon, support with Bitcoin, and shop through scotthorton.org slash Amazon. And thanks. All right, you guys, welcome back. I'm Scott Horton. This is my show, Scott Horton Show, live here on Liberty Radio Network, noon to 2 Eastern, 11 to 1 Texas time, which is what really counts. On the line, I got Reza Marashi. He's in Vienna, Austria. He's also from the National Iranian American Council. That's NIACouncil.org. They do a lot of great work there. Go and look them up, NIACouncil.org. Welcome back to the show, Reza. How are you? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me back. Uh, very happy to have you here. Obviously, you're covering the nuclear talks, and um, I just uh, finished rereading Gareth Porter's article here. Um, I don't think he'd mind if I call them Eeyore. Uh, he's been such a downer on this thing. Obviously, he's uh, number one greatest on the facts in the whole world when it comes to this. Wrote the book on the Iranian nuclear program, but has been so pessimistic that uh, Obama and Kerry are going to be able or have the will and the capacity to make sure and get this freaking thing done. And yet his latest deal is, hey, all right, man, this is looking pretty good. So, Reza, please tell me the good news. Yeah, I do think things are looking pretty good. Look, the reality of the situation is it's not done until it's done. But I think we also should acknowledge the tremendous amount of progress that's been made uh, by all accounts that I've heard so far. Uh, the deal itself is 20 pages long, and it's been completed. And then attached to the 20-page deal, you have five annexes. So all together, deal and all five annexes, that's 80 pages. Four of those five annexes are reportedly done. So now they're working on one final annex. And they're not even haggling over the content that is in the annex. They're haggling over the wording and the sequencing and the scope and the depth of the various issues within that annex. So when the two sides say very openly and very publicly they've never been closer to sealing the deal, they're actually telling the truth. Yeah. All right. Now, um, so what was outstanding most recently and and does it look to you like it's been taken care of here, the, the outstanding issues of the last couple of weeks? Yeah, I mean, look, there's been a variety of issues. But uh, most recently, there is this issue of an arms embargo that was written into a former U.N. Security Council resolution on Iran. And I mean former as in it's currently on the books, but in a comprehensive nuclear deal, they will rewrite the U.N. Security Council resolution to cut some things out and leave some things in. One of the haggling points here uh, is that the Russians and the Iranians wanted the arms embargo taken out of any future UN Security Council resolution. The Americans and the Europeans want to leave it in. More specifically, there's this idea of uh, depleted uranium being used uh, as armor-piercing munitions and Iran's ability to potentially export that stuff if and when a comprehensive nuclear deal gets done. Bloomberg News has a great story on this, and I would encourage everyone to read it. Hmm. Uh, finding some kind of middle ground, finding some kind of compromise where Russia is allowed to sell uh, arms to Iran, and Iran agrees not to hand over uh, destructive munitions to Hezbollah, for example, is the gray area. And they need to work out the kind of wording that will allow both sides to go home and claim victory. And I think that's what they're in the process of trying to do. Yeah, right get now. the U.S. Army to buy up all their DU uh, munitions. Well, I mean, it, it, you can't rule out the possibility that, you know, maybe that's uh, that's something that could happen later on down the line. Um, but dotting the I's and crossing the T's when it comes to this one issue, I think, is the biggest remaining obstacle. And then you get down to, to brass tacks of really just, you know, comma here, period, there, dot this T, cross this I. Uh, they're close. And well, now, I'm Gareth says the, the possible military dimensions has been solved, and we know that's basically a conglomerate of the forged Israel, uh, uh, 
<clears throat> so-called Iranian laptop, uh, the alleged studies documents, and a couple of other um, accusations that, of course, the Iranians have always denied the legitimacy of the information in the first place and have never been able to confront the documents in person. They've never even been shown the alleged studies, for example. Um, and yet this has, you know, been, you know, pretty dangerously, I think, an outstanding issue where they're, you know, made to admit when did you stop beating your wife kind of a thing when there's no real evidence that they ever were. And yet now it looks like, according to Garrett, that the IAEA has announced, because the Americans asked them to, that, oh, yeah, the PMD, don't worry, we're going to go ahead, we're going to have that resolved by December, no problem. Uh, we just have a couple of more uh, I's to dot and T's to cross, and that'll be no big deal. So whew, uh, we really dodged a bullet on that one, right? I think so. You know, uh, I mean, that could have been a real problem if, hey, you guys have to admit everything that these forged documents accuse you of. Yeah, I mean, look, it, it was a real problem until very recently, so there's no doubt about that. Um, and I think it took some pretty serious compromising on the part of the Iranians and the P5 plus one in order to find a mutually acceptable solution. Yeah, and yeah it's right, because they matter. didn't say, like the Republicans would accuse them, the Democrats, they didn't say, oh, never mind the PMD. They got the IAEA to admit that, well, whatever is supposedly of concern here can be resolved by us in short order. Yeah, it's a matter of mapping out a mutually acceptable solution and formula uh, to address the issues that the IAEA says it needs to address, but also without violating Iranian, Iranian sovereignty, uh, espionage concerns, and making sure that this process has a beginning, a middle, and an end. The Iranians don't want it to be open-ended. And I think that uh, apparently they found a solution that both sides can live with, and uh, they should both be applauded for that. All right. Now, so what's all this talk about? Well, we still need a couple of more days now because at that point, it seems like if they're this close, they should just sign the dang thing instead of giving the war party more talking points about what a joke this is. I saw him yesterday on Twitter saying, oh, yeah, Holbrook's ghost, open-ended diplomacy on this issue forever. We don't ever need a final deal as long as we're still negotiating always. Well, I think the reality of the situation is that uh, p there's a, a, a segment of uh, the political elite in Washington that have always been opposed to a nuclear deal with Iran. So regardless of what the actual contents of a deal are, they're going to oppose it. Uh, that's not the issue at hand. The issue at hand here is fence sitters, particularly in Congress, because the American public are smart enough to know that this deal is going to be a good deal. Uh, no American government would sell out American interests uh, to try to get a nuclear deal. But getting people in Congress to uh, approve the deal and make sure that we don't violate the commitments that America has made as a part of this deal is going to be critical going forward. And I think that the administration and people who are like-minded – are going to go out there and, and just be honest with the American people about what this deal is and, and why it's a good deal if, in fact, they're able to seal it. And uh, hopefully the rest will take care of itself. Mm -hmm. Well, now, so another supposed controversy anyway was the sanctions relief. And yet I guess it was pretty apparent, at least since the framework was announced, that, well, as you guys are implementing your thing, we can, you know, de-implement the sanctions uh, it, you know, in that way, but it's going to take some time. It's not just a matter of flipping a switch or signing a piece of paper. Um, and, and the TV portrayed that as a real conflict that they were demanding all sanctions be relieved immediately. And the Americans were saying that that's impossible. It's not going to happen, but, uh, they've already found their compromise there. It sounds like too, huh? Sounds like it. And that's, that's, that's huge. Uh, we shouldn't discount how important that is. Uh, what this, I think the most important point to take away here from the sanctions issue is that it's very easy to put forward sanctions, uh, impose sanctions. It's very difficult to undo them. The reality of the situation is that now that the United States and Iran are negotiating, the United States has been put in a position where it's incredibly difficult to undo sanctions. And that has eroded America's negotiating position more than I think most people would have originally assumed. So there is a little bit of luck here and that we were able to reach some kind of solution with Iran on the issue. Uh, but, you know, uh, it sounds like both sides feel good about it, and that's the most important thing. That's an interesting fact, though, that, you know, despite all the talk about, oh, all the sanctions are what brought them to the table, even though they've been trying to come to the table since way back, you know, 12 years ago and what have you on this stuff, that actually, as you're saying, there's so many sanctions, it actually made the negotiations more difficult because of the difficulty in undoing them. 
Absolutely. Uh, look, it's, it's, it's a sexy talking point to say that sanctions brought Iran to the table. Uh, it's an inconvenient truth to acknowledge that 20,000 Iranian centrifuges brought the United States to the table. Yeah. Because the previous, the previous American position was we won't negotiate with Iran until they stop enriching uranium. Well, Iran never stopped enriching uranium. But the re- both sides were escalating the conflict. The U.S. and Iran were escalating the conflict up to a point where they were essentially running out of options to escalate the conflict further short of war. So the truth of the matter is both sides blinked. Yeah. We in the United States have a propensity to emphasize and highlight how Iran blinked while downplaying the compromises uh, that we've made. Uh, but I think it's important to highlight the compromises that both sides have made so that the American people know that diplomacy requires compromise, dialogue, in a sustained fashion that, uh, uh, that allows for win-win outcomes. If America right. gets victory at the expense of some other country's interests or security, that's not durable security for America. Right. Well, and you know, uh, we're just a minute over time here, and I'll let you go, but uh, it kind of goes without saying in our discussions, because we've talked about this so much, um, but it, it shouldn't. We should mention for the people who aren't that familiar that the Iranians are really giving up a lot of their nuclear program, the, the one that they've established over all this time, the 20,000 centrifuges you just mentioned. They're reducing that down to 5,000, right? Yeah, the Iranians have made a tremendous amount of compromises, and I think U.S. officials would acknowledge that openly as well. The limitations, the technical limitations they're going to be making to the nuclear program are, are vast, and the entire production and supply chain of their nuclear program will be monitored from start to finish. Unprecedented, most transparent nuclear program in the history of the world after these inspections go into place. Period. Full stop. Yep, no doubt about it. All right, well, hey, man, uh, thanks for coming back on the show, and thanks for all your great work on this issue and for covering the talks from vienna there i'm addicted to uh, your twitter feed over here and uh, i'm, hey, I'm, I'm keeping up with the meals you're eating and everything here rez i'm i'm on well, it much man. appreciated my diet's gone to hell in a handbasket but we're gonna <laughs> fix that when we get back to america all right well listen man thanks again i appreciate it cheers all right so that's the great rez marashi he's at niacouncil.org the national iranian american council niacouncil.org he's also at the iran talks in vienna we'll be right back hey i'll scott horton here for liberty.me the social network and community-based publishing platform for the liberty-minded. Liberty.me combines the best of social media technology all in one place and features classes, discussions, guides, events, publishing, podcasts, and so much more. And Jeffrey Tucker and I are starting a new monthly show at Liberty.me, Eye on the Empire. It's just 4 bucks a month if you use promo code SCOTT when you sign up. And hey, once you do, add me as a friend on there at scotthorton.liberty.me. Be free. Liberty.me. Hey, y'all, guess what? You can now order transcripts of any interview I've done for the incredibly reasonable price of two and a half bucks each. Listen, finding a good transcriptionist is near impossible, but I've got one now. Just go to scotthorton.org slash transcripts, enter the name and date of the interview you want written up, click the PayPal button, and I'll have it in your email in 72 hours max. You don't need a PayPal account to do this. Man, I'm really going to have to learn how to talk more good. That's scotthorton.org slash transcripts. Hey, Al Scott Horton here to tell you about this great new book by Michael Swanson, The War State. In The War State, Swanson examines how Presidents Truman, Eisenhower, and Kennedy both expanded and fought to limit the rise of the new national security state after World War II. This nation is ever to live up to its creed of liberty and prosperity for everyone. We are going to have to abolish the empire. Know your enemy. Get The War State by Michael Swanson. It's available at your local bookstore or at Amazon.com in Kindle or in paperback. Just click the book in the right margin at scotthorton.org or thewarstate.com. 